because God has directed them to do so. So the little things that we need to do, those are the big things that turn out to change lives. With every little miracle, there's a big change in someone's life. And that's, that's what I'd like to share with you. The key word is emunah, faith, hope. And let's all do this together. Let's all do this together. I believe that as one in Christ, we are a lot stronger. Another Hebrew word, echad, one. We've got to look at us as one body of Christ. And that's how we're going to change the world. Not as one person, but as one body. And when something gets us down, let's look towards the Lord and who he puts in our life to pick us up. Let's not say, why me? Let's say, why not? Let's really, from this day forth, from this, these words that I've spoken, that God has given me, let's hope that they will have touched even just one person to go out and show the love of Christ. We can slam and bash a person with a Bible till we blew in the face. That's not going to win souls. We need to show the love of Christ, the ahava, the I give. Yeah, let's, let's, let's just give to each other. Let's just with every breath, just give. You know, I'm inclined here to tell you another story. I'm, I'm heavily tattooed and inked. You know, today I've got on my, what I call my DCW shirt. It's my dance, my church, and my work shirt because I needed to look a little bit more presentable. You'll usually find me in a vest or a T-shirt, all right? No shoes, pair of shorts. But I got my DCW on here today, and I'm saying to you, we can all change. We all need to focus on our love. And I thought, you know, I'm going to hide my ink. But then I thought, no, let me show you something while I've got you here. This is the sort of ink that I have. But I have something very interesting. And it's just on the side. I'll just have to shift around so you can see it. It says here on my forearm, dear God, I can't do this alone. I need your help. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'll be walking down the street or I'll be mixing with these criminals, these gangsters. And I'll shake their hand and they'll look at my tattoo and they'll say, what's that? And I'll say, I'll read it. And they'll read it and they'll say, dear God, I can't do this alone. I need your help in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, there you go. Now you know Yeshua. And then we talk more. So use the tools that God has given you. Use God's sense of humor and your sense of humor to, to win people to the Lord. And it's right here, right now, that I would like to appeal to all of you out there to pray with me and to just plant that seed of hope in your heart and invite Jesus into your hearts. And it's a simple prayer. A lot of people, you know, will stand out there and they will wave their Bible around and they will say this long-winded prayer. You know, thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, please, God, thank you. And bring this out, God. Thank you. And you know, come on down to the river, brother. And come on, we can work together. No. All I would like to say is to those of you who may be battling with something, repeat after me. You can just do it in a quiet, unassuming manner. Just repeat with me. Dear God, I can't do this alone. I need your help. In Jesus' name, amen. And I would like to pray for you now. And I would like to say, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam, Shechianu Vekiimanu Vehigianu 
לזמן הזה. I invite you to live every day as if it was your last. And I invite you to walk hand in hand with me as part of God's team. Now, I know I'm running slightly over time. So whatever we need to do from here on forth, I'm in your hands. If there's any questions, at the moment, I'm just staring at myself and at a blank screen. But if there's anything okay, you'd thanks. like to ask. Thank you, Craig. Thank you so much. What an exciting life you've had and what a wonderful message you brought. A message of hope, a message of encouragement for people that they can have a different life. They can have, find purpose in their life. God has a purpose for everyone's life, everyone who's listening and watching. God has a plan and purpose for your life. But you need to know this same Jesus, Yeshua, that Craig has shared about tonight. You know, the Bible says we've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, not one. That's why Jesus came. And he died on a cross in your place. He took the punishment for your sins. And you need to know that you're a sinner. You need that conviction. You need a change in your heart. Your heart to be completely transformed. 180 degrees turn, like Craig said. Turn 180 degrees in a new direction. And if you want Jesus to come into your life, then sincerely pray this prayer with me right now. Lord Jesus. I confess I am a sinner because the Bible says we have all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. And that includes me. But I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross in my place, taking the punishment for my sins. And you poured out your precious blood to wash my sins away. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. I turn to you with all my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my life right now by your spirit and give to me the free gift of eternal life. I receive you now. Thank you for coming into my life. Now I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that God has raised him from the dead. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me, for making me a child of God. Help me from this day forward to live for you, to share you with others, And I look forward to that day when you will come again and take me to be with you forever. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please let us know. Contact us on our phone line, plus 44-794-355-0287. Or go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you will find the Salvation Prayer link. You'll find the Bible app. Lots of information that will help you. I'm going to hand over to Eric now. Uh, George is away, but Eric is stepping in tonight. So, Eric, have you got some questions for Craig? He's coming. Jesus is coming. I can't wait to hear the trumpet call. Jesus is coming And when he comes We'll crown him Lord of all And when he comes We'll crown him Lord of all High Stories Live Hello Craig, what a wonderful are you doing? I thought to myself Tonight How am I going to talk to this man He's the most athletic man I can think of, and I'm the most useless as there is. But we both a love for motorcycles, and uh, I just thank God for that. 
And I thank God that you're working with motorcyclists from the inside out. And to be saved by David Smithhurst, to be led to the Lord by David Smithhurst, is a wonderful miracle by a man that is so deeply involved with God and working with God. And I just remember a time when uh, I took David Smithhurst out to dinner. I said, oh, by the way, I'm going to Latvia for the weekend. He said, what are you doing on Friday morning? I said, nothing. He said, you are now. You're speaking in the maximum security prison. And I'm sitting there having dinner with him and thinking, <coughs> what's this man thinking about? Then he said, what are you doing Sunday? I said, well, I'll go to church with my interpreter, but I won't be doing anything. He said, you are now. He said, you're speaking in the biggest Pentecostal church in Riga. I thought, my goodness. And I didn't believe it. But next morning, I had two emails, one from the chaplain of the prison, send me a copy of your passport and I'll book you in, and one from the administrator of the church, tell me where you're staying and I'll pick you up. And it was such a marvellous addition to my trip, uh, going to prison and seeing about a dozen people saved. And, you know, it's just so wonderful. And uh, the church, I said, I bring greetings from your friend David Smithers, and I want you to know that your bishop here is a man of faith. I said, how do I know he's a man of faith? I said, because he's taken David Smithers' word for it. I'm a good speaker, and he's never heard me speak. It's such a marvellous listening to your story and seeing the, the joy. Well, it's beautiful because I have the same story as you. David did exactly the same thing. We're connecting dots. He came to me and all of a sudden I was standing in front of um, the population of Yilgava prison. The guys yeah. on death row and the normal inmates. So yeah. we're connecting the dots, brother. Our love for motorcycles. You know, David has been such an integral part. I'll share a story with you. I was traveling, you know, on David's behalf. And I see this Muslim gentleman in the airport looking absolutely frantic. And he doesn't know what he's doing, where, who he's talking to. He has terror all over his face. I say to him, brother, what's wrong? He says, I don't know what direction to pray in. So I say to him, all right, I'll get you help. And I go to the front desk and ask for the assistance that he needs. And we find the best possible place for him to pray and the direction for him to pray in. And as he starts to pray and he's bent over on his knees and he's doing his thing, I start to pray. And I lift up my hands like this and I start to pray. And afterwards we get into a conversation and he says to, I say to him, my friend, his name's Ahmed Borat. I said, my friend, why do you bow? Why do you pray like that? And he explains to me about the Black Rock and explains to me about Mecca, explains everything to me. And I listen to him. And he says to me, well, my friend, why do you do this when you pray? I said, it's because I get better reception. <laughs> and he packs out laughing. And I managed to lead him to a relationship with Jesus. And to this day, we're still in contact. So as I sit here, the best story I can tell you today is keep your sense of humor. God's That's got a wonderful sense of humor. He took, an, he took a man like me and, 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 and worked with me and still works with me. So if God has a sense of humor, I implore you today, keep your sense of humor. Because if we can't laugh at ourselves, we can't find the joy in life where are we going to find the hope? And that's what this whole thing that we're doing relies on, hope. Well, and we've already found a friendship today and a connection in, in motorbikes, in, you know, in David Smithhurst. We are all connected at a cellular level through the yeah. DNA of Christ. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, pray for me because I've got a dinner with David Smathers next week, I think it is. <laughs> Goodness knows. All I can pray for you, my friend, is that right here, right now, I command and speak to into existence that yeah. you are unleashed and launched into the next phase of your ministry through the words that David Smithers speaks over you and through the blood of Christ that courses through his and your veins, I command it that you are released into the ministry and the next phase of the ministry that God wants you to be in. In Yeshua's name, we say, Amen. Amen. Believe. Amen. We Thank believe. you. Thank you. Your, your story tonight has been one of encouragement, encouragement, encouragement. And uh, I'm so glad that so much encouragement is coming out and it's in, being infused into people around the world. And I pray that the outcome of this meeting will be even greater than any that we've had for weeks and months in Jesus' name. It's really, really good to speak to you. Um, and tell, tell me, uh, where do you visit in prisons these days? Do you go to prisons in Australia? I do. There's um, Brisbane Correctional Facility. I do go in there. But what I've been blessed is one further. I go into clubhouses, which are outlaw clubhouses that bikers meet in. All right. And these clubhouses are where they hold what they call church. OK. And church is their meeting where they plan all their shenanigans. And I am blessed to go into these clubhouses and sit with these gangsters and share Jesus with them and disrupt their plans of selling methamphetamine and cocaine and cannabis and going out and assassinating the next person. So the prison ministry is a part, like BCC is a part of where I go. But what we are trying to do is catch the brothers before they go to jail or just as they've been released, when they're sitting vulnerable in a clubhouse where they perceive that these men love them, when all they do is fear each other. Because I believe if someone fears you, they will never love you. If someone loves you, they will always respect you and never fear you. And this is the beautiful ministry I have. Like today, I'm going to donate blood plasma because I've got the golden drop. I've got O negative blood. So I'm going to infect everyone with my Jesus blood. And then I'm going into surface paradise and I have a meeting with a high ranking sergeant of an outlaw motorcycle club that is involved in this war that is happening in New South Wales where there's been 16 murders so far. He's coming. Jesus is coming. And I'm going to discuss with the Sergeant of Arms what we can do to stem the tide of these murders. You have 18 year old boys that are being recruited into these positions where they are given a gun to assassinate someone. Ultimately, they get caught, their lives are ruined, their families' lives are ruined. So myself and the sergeant are going to be meeting to see what we can come up with, how we can get God more into this war that's going on in New South Wales. The same as we pray for the conflict in the Ukraine and all over the world. And that's what I'll be doing today. Besides playing soccer dad this afternoon, because the twins have got soccer, and mm. then I've got to see uh, two patients as well. So it's a busy day. And wow. I'm just glad that I can share with you that, you know, busy is good. Keep busy for God, though. Amen. Keep busy for God. That's right. And God will so, use it, take you up and use you mightily. And he is doing that. And That's all we need to do, like even donating blood. You know, to me, I lie there, I pray, I listen to my audio Bible, and whatever's coming out of my body is going into someone else's body. 
So the spirit of Christ lives through prayer and through action. We need to be warriors of action, not worry warts, but warriors. And we also need to stop praying on each other. P-R-E-Y-I-N-G. We pray on each other. We chop each other's legs out from under each other and we disguise it as a prayer request. We take gossip and we disguise it as a prayer request. We need to stop doing that as a collective community. And we need to pray, not over, but into, P-R-A-Y, into people. And we need to love people. That's Amen. all I can encourage you to do. Like, I love these outlaws. I don't like what they're doing. I don't like what they're doing. But through my love, hopefully they will stop doing what they are doing because I am of equal standing. I am a patched outlaw biker. So they can identify with me. And that's how we can share the love of Christ because these men have fear and their fear is for each other. My fear is awe and reverence in Yeshua. And that is what we're going to speak about to the sergeant today. Is awe and reverence in a higher power to stop the murder. To stop these kids from being recruited. To take them off the streets and put them into one of our boxing programs. Or our fishing programs where they go and catch bull sharks at the Kumara River. You know, there's more to laugh. They, they throw a couple of hot dogs on the barbecue and have a couple of soft drinks and fish for bull sharks instead yeah. of going around selling drugs and shooting each other. That's Man. what we got to do. Man. You know, I know sometimes I sound a little bit disjointed and I can repeat myself, but we have to. The Bible is repetition. The God of word is repetition. Sometimes it may be confusing my accent, but even if it's just one word, that, that, that resonates with one person, then God has achieved what God wanted to achieve. Because out of chaos and confusion comes calm. We can either freeze, fight, or we can take flight. I refuse to do that anymore. I don't want to fight. I don't want to freeze. I don't want to take flight. I want to find my flow, my flow through Christ. Flow like water. Be obedient. Water can go anywhere that God wishes it to go. And you, my friends today, who's ever listening or going to listen, be like water. Let God take you there. Don't second guess it. Run with it. If it's not of God, you'll find out really quickly it's not of God. But it, if, it's, if it is of God, don't miss the opportunity today. Don't yes. miss the opportunity to tell a loved one how special they are. That's it. Because it's too late. When they are gone, you know, my biggest regret is not telling people that I loved them enough while they were living and stood over them at a funeral and told them how wonderful they were and how much I loved them. We need to, we need to really focus on that love aspect. Amen. You know, love, it today. love changes everything. It and does. God, I've, really makes the difference in all of our lives. It's so yeah. good to speak to you tonight. It's so good to have you. And we pray that this meeting that has gone on now will move mightily around as it repeats and repeats and repeats. We have millions of people are watching these life stories and we're we're just getting out to more and more. Thank you very much, Craig, for your meeting, yeah. for your yeah. information, for your input. And I'll just hand back to Alan. Thank Thanks, you. Eric. Humbled and honoured. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Craig, can I ask you? We we'll always ask our guests one question. What sure. is the, in all the decisions you've made, what is the most important decision you ever made in your life? To come to know Jesus and to be on God's team. Wonderful. That is the most Wonderful. important. When I sat down with David and I said flippantly, who's this Jesus dude? All coarse and full of rubbish. 
my most important decision I ever made was to have that coffee, was to just open my heart, just open my heart. That was it. That, that was it. It was something so simple. It wasn't going to a church. It wasn't, you know, reading up on anything or, or trying to plan. It was just the best thing I ever did was had a cup of coffee with a friend. Wonderful. And, you know, you can do that. Sit down with a friend and share Jesus with them. You're surprised at what will happen. You're just sowing seeds over a cup of coffee. Dave Smathers, it's great to have you with us. Wonderful day. I appreciate all the work you do, Dave, and, and for helping us with it with the speakers as well. We appreciate that very, very much. Thank you. And thank Pleasure. you again, Craig, tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Howard. Uh, can I tell you again, if you need help, please contact us on our hotline, plus 44-794-355-0287. Again, you can go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. You'll find a Bible app. you find all sorts of information there. You can watch the other stories from previous Monday evenings mm -hmm. on YouTube. And please uh, subscribe. We need more subscribers. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. Please subscribe to our website, to our YouTube. And can I invite you to join us again next Monday, 8 o'clock UK time, for another life story. And this time we're coming back to the UK. We have a, a, young, a young man from uh, Banbury called Chris Tunstall. And Chris is going to share his story next week. Chris is married uh, to Beverly. He has two adopted children from the Philippines. He is a lead engineer with uh, Jaguar Land Rover. He's had many experiences in his life, been through many problems, uh, childlessness, adoption, redundancy, bereavement. But he says, no matter what life throws at you, Jesus is faithful and will see you through. That's the message that Chris is going to bring next Monday. So please join us then. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. May you know the peace of God, which passes all human understanding. And may the joy of Jesus fill your hearts. He's coming. Jesus is coming. I can't wait to hear the trumpet call. He's coming. Jesus is coming. And when he comes, we'll crown him Lord of all. And when he comes, we'll crown him Lord of all. Life. Story.